Today on 10 Minute IT Gems, we're joined by Andrew Smith, who is the Senior Manager of Strategy and Market Intelligence at Wasabi Technologies. Wasabi is on a mission to store all the world's data by making data storage simple, affordable, fast, and secure. If you have data to store, Wasabi's pledge is to always be the cheapest, fastest, most secure, and reliable cloud storage in the world. Andrew joins us today to tell us more about Wasabi and what trends he is seeing in the APAC region. Thank you for coming along, Andrew, and welcome to the gym. Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, Tom. Thanks <laughs> no, for having me. <laughs> Sorry no about that. That's all right. <laughs> all right, well, let's jump straight into it. How much data are APAC organizations storing in the cloud, and how does this compare to other regions? Well, um, let me take two seconds to quickly preface uh, some of my answers because a lot of the data that Wasabi recently gathered from uh, the APAC region in terms of trends around cloud storage came from our 2023 Global Cloud Storage Index. So it was a survey of 1,000 respondents. We had 200 in EMEA, or 200, 200 in APAC uh, spread across Japan, Australia, and Singapore. So that's kind of like the basis for our APAC data asked them a bunch of questions about cloud storage. Um, this was fielded by a third party. So it's, in my opinion, uh, coming from the analyst world, um, absolutely credible data. So we saw that we kind of, one of the first questions we asked respondents was how much data does your organization have stored in the public cloud overall in terms of capacity? And for APAC respondents, we actually saw upwards of 10 petabytes of cloud storage. Um, so the average of the survey overall was 12. 0.7. So APAC was slightly lower, which I think aligns pretty well with kind of the how I think of the maturity of the APAC segment when it comes to cloud services and cloud storage services in general. Um, they're usually, I don't want to say they're a couple years behind, but they typically have more on-premises infrastructure that they're still working to move or migrate to the cloud. Um, but yeah, I'll squeaking right above double digit pet petabytes on average uh, was pretty impressive finding from our survey. Well, staying on that data, do you expect that to increase or decrease over the next year? So that's a good question. We, When we set out to do this survey, um, it was at the end of 2022. So kind of like December, November, December timeframe. And as you can imagine, as you know, there was a lot of economic uncertainty towards the end of the year. Um, a lot of headlines around layoffs and kind of cont contracting IT spending. So we asked two questions. We wanted to know if enterprises were planning to store uh, more data in the cloud over the next year um, and also how their budgets were trending. So when we asked them about volumes, kind of stored data in the cloud specifically, we saw um, our APAC respondents, 85% of them said that they expect their capacity stored in the public cloud to increase in 2020, over the next 12 months. So basically for the 2023 period, um, all of them were kind of above 70% in terms of the singling out countries, but it was actually interesting because Australia came in the highest. 92% of our Australian respondents said they plan to increase the data. So, so, you know, we wanted to get some data points to help us gauge the coming year in terms of how our industry was set up to do and get that from the buyer's perspective. And I think overall, from a capacity standpoint, um, we kind of heard a resounding increase from our APAC respondents. Mm -hmm. Well, now, how are APAC organizations planning their budgets for cloud storage over the next 12 months, especially if you think it's going to increase? Right. So this was kind of the, the yin and the yang of these two questions, because there's, there's a chance that enterprises, organizations, although they were planning to increase their stored capacity in the cloud, they weren't necessarily willing to budget for it, right? They would want to increase their capacity, but I, I want to keep my budgets the same, right? Get more for less. Um, and that's absolutely could have been a trend. So this was the follow-up question. We wanted not only asking about capacity growing, but 
we asked organizations if their public cloud storage budgets would increase, decrease, or stay the same over the next 12 months. Here we heard 87% of our APAC respondents indicate that they planned to increase their budgets. So again, kind of like an overall resounding yes to this question, which was good. It dovetailed, it dovetailed well with the capacity question. Um, and our so our APAC, if we compare the 87% of APAC respondents who said increase, they actually came in higher than the global average of 84%. So I mean, we're only talking three percentage points, four percentage points rounded. Um, but again, when you're get into the 80%, especially in a survey, each percent kind of really starts to matter. So it was great to see APAC come in a little bit higher than the global average, give us kind of a good, I, I don't know, temperature test barometer kind of reading of how the APAC industry or the APAC region was thinking about their spending of cloud storage overall. Well, now, are APEC organizations historically meeting or exceeding their cloud storage budgeting? Yes. So this was where perhaps the survey started to get a little bit self-serving from the Wasabi standpoint, because Wasabi does everything just as effectively, but at a lower cost, right? So we want to know about budgets. Were APAC respondents uh, over budget, under budget when it came specifically to cloud storage? We heard from our respondents, 51%, so just over half of APAC respondents exceeded their budgeted spend on public cloud storage. So you've got about half who were over budget, you got about half who were under budget or at budget or under budget, right? Um, that's how it shook out. And that aligned pretty well with the global average. So the global average came in, I think at about 52, 53%. APAC was about 51%. We actually saw respondents in Singapore seem to be, uh, ex seem to have extremely well-managed budgets because only 28% of our Singapore respondents were over budget. So they kind of, they were the reason that the APAC average dipped down kind of below that, you know, below the global average overall, 60% um, of Australia respondents, our, our Australian respondents actually exceeded their budget. So they were a little bit higher, but the overall story, APAC worldwide, EMEA was the same. A lot of respondents, regardless of their global region, um, were exceeding budgets. So it's kind of clearly a pain point for the industry overall. Yeah, exactly. Now, what are APEC organizations' top selection criteria when it comes to choosing a cloud storage provider or service? So this one was interesting. We essentially, we asked the question, what are your top considerations of a vendor when you choose a storage service? We gave respondents uh, like a laundry list to choose from. Um, there were at least nine, probably 10 options. They ranged from uh, performance, TCO, price, uh, availability, global reach, you know, everything. So regardless of region, the number one and number, th the top kind of three to four regions, uh, top, top three to four reasons were the same regardless of region. But what we saw among our APAC respondents was a focus on uh, availability, of adjacent services from the same provider and sustainability. And then rounding out the top three was data protection. So kind of the availability of adjacent services and data protection features were the two that were constant regardless of region. But then when you got into APAC and EMEA, that sustainability element or criteria, whatever you want to call it, a vendor selection actually jumped up the list. And honestly, this was totally unexpected to me. I put sustainability and for, by sustainability, I mean like uh, we kind of prompted respondents around things like, does your cloud provider offer you um, a built-in tool to calculate your carbon footprint? Do they make commitments around carbon offsets? Um, do they have a uh, and a, do they have a corporate goal? Your meaning your service provider to improve their emissions over a period of time, right? Kind of we uh, umbrella everything sustainability. 
And I, I did not expect it to be in the top, you know, five of these 10 suggestions. And all of a sudden we see it jump up this list this year. And clearly it matters to uh, um, APAC and EMEA respondents, especially. So this is a really interesting trend overall, the impact of um, sustainability when it comes to cloud services. It seems like respondents want to know. And I think it, it a lot of it has to do with regional pressure from regulatory bodies, um, compliance reasons. Typically, a cloud service provider will be like a, 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 you hear these scope one, scope two, scope three emissions categories. Typically, a cloud service provider is a scope three uh, for any organization. And they want to measure those scope three emissions. Um, and they want to get those accurate, reliable measurements from their cloud service service provider, be able to build it into their corporate uh, sustainability program, their enterprise ESG program. And that was the big story, right? <laughs> sustainability beating out things like cost and ease of use, who I that no one would have predicted that, right? You've got you've got availability, data protection, security, the usual suspects at the top of that list. And all of a sudden, um, the sustainability initiative has snuck into the top three. So that was found that really interesting. Well, now, what is the rate of cloud migration among APEC orgs? Um, and how does that compare to other regions as well? It was significantly higher, um, actually. So this was pretty surprising. The question we asked was, uh, have you, it was, have you migrated storage capacity, stored capacity from on-prem to the public cloud in the past year. Um, the global average was 89%, and our, among our APAC respondents, 93% said yes. So a high instance of migration, but into the 90% in a survey, you're like, that's, that's, yeah. that's high. Yeah. So 93% of APAC respondents, uh, significant amount of uh, storage migration from on-prem to cloud just in the past year. In Singapore, that was up to 96%. Uh, Japan, Australia, both 92%. So really high rates of migration. Um, I think this bodes, it's a great complementary statistic to the, uh, the data points on budget growth and capacity growth as well, right? A lot of that is coming by, maybe not the budget part, but a lot of the volume growth is coming by way of migration from on-prem. Um, so you're, this, this, uh, being able to validate, get a validated data point on the migration aspect uh, of data movement to cloud was great too. And to see APAC above the global average was definitely interesting to me. All right then. Well, it has been fantastic to learn more from Wasabi and what your thoughts are about cloud services in the APAC region. It's been a pleasure having you on the jam, Andrew. We look forward to hearing more from Wasabi very soon. Tom, thank you very much. It was a pleasure being here. But yeah, I look forward to doing it again. It was a pleasure to have you on, Andrew. Thank you.